This is part five of the awesome rolling toolbox. We're in the design process and we're in SketchUp. Uh, sort of picking up from where we last left off, I've done a bit of work. What I've done is I've, I've sort of jumped ahead and done my next phase, and I'm going to sort of revisit that so you can see what I did, maybe show you a few techniques, um, and that way the video won't be quite as long. First off, uh, in the last video you saw how I put everything on its own layer so that I can uh, show and hide the visibility of things which really helps and you can see I have put the cabinets all on a, a visible layer that's something I want to be able to look at by themselves and I've put the tools uh, they'll be loaded in the cabinets I need to make sure visually I can fit things in and then I've got one I call massing and that's these blocks rather than design really complex cabinets and see what fits. Uh, I just do these quick uh, um, blocks here and, I'll, and I put them on their own layer so I can hide them later. Uh, and they help me to sort of mass up the design so you can quickly move through this. I use the same technique when I'm designing houses as well. It, it's better to um, so get, get things in a good direction, make sure they're going to work, and then start spending your time on the detailing. So the tools you can see, I've put them all on their own layer. These are the tools that I really need to consider. These are my benches here. Uh, they're just uh, no detail on them. They're just masked up. In fact, I'll Command Z and I'm going to... Uh, with my uh, selection tool, the black arrow, which is with the space bar key, I'm going to hold down the shift key and click, 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 and then hit the M key for move. And you can see uh, I've sort of just stacked my benches. Now, these are just blocks. I've, I've uh, used uh, the bucket tool to give them kind of a wood color just for distinction here. And then I also have a sawhorse. This is the one that uh, uh, works for the... Polk workbench and so this is not an exact detail of it it's actually though the the right width and height and thickness and I'll need two of those I need to consider where to store those and then my levels are another thing um, so what I did here on the levels is I just created uh, a little rectangle which is the width and height of a level and then I just drew them out to the links of my various levels this is a representation of all the levels that I have in my uh workshop this is where all those were stored um, so I want to be able to I may not store them the same way I have some other sawhorses eight of them or or four pairs that I like to keep they're the plastic store horses first off I know I'm going to need two of these so I'm going to O key for orbit and I'm going to hit the move tool hold down the shift key to get the plus and that's going to give me my second one of those that way I won't forget uh, that I have two of those to consider so now with uh, just anywhere in the drawing, because I can move them around, I'm going to hit the R key for rectangle. And I'm just going to do it flat on the ground um, to start with. And <clears throat> I know that it, it will be, um, again, 30 inches wide and 36 inches tall. Enter. And then for sake of uh, dis distinguishing them from the masked up stuff, I'm going to hit the B key for bucket and I'm going to pick a color. Again, I have my layers over here. I'll bring it over so I can choose uh, in the model. I can choose, um, you know, pretty much anything. Metal gives me a bunch of metal stuff there, but I'm going to just pick a color. So I'm going to grab yellow and they are, when they're folded, two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to... Uh, just click on the surface there, enter that push-pull, pull up, 2.25, enter. All right, now I'm going to triple-click, right-click, make a group. If I hit the M key for move and I highlight the side of it, you see those little crosses come up, and that just gives it to me automatically, so it will save a step. So I'm going to uh, rotate it up this way, and then I am hit the O key to rotate the camera, and then back to the M key for move, and... There we go. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. I need eight of them, and they're in the orientation I want. So I've, I've hit the M key for move, and I'm going to hit the Option key for copy. I'm going to grab this edge, move it over, because I'm going to be stacking them that way. Click there. Now, while I haven't done anything else, see down the corner, it's just still showing that length. I'm going to hit X7, Enter. 
And that, had, had I done anything else, I would not be able to, to do that multiply. But now you can see that I have, because I did seven plus the original one, that gives me eight. And because I'm going to store them uh, in the, the um, trailer together like this, I'm going to go ahead and select them all, drawing uh, my selection box from left to right. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a group. So now I have a group in a group. I've, I drew on layer zero, so I took them and I moved them to the tool layer. So now when I click off and on tool visibility, I'll be able to hide all the tools at once. I want a box that these horses and these horses will store in. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two, put them close to each other. Sometimes you can't get things to move where you want if you just orient your camera view. Again, you're working in 3D on a 2D screen. So now what I'm going to do is I want to keep these together. So I'll do the same thing. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a group. And these are on the layer zero. So I want to move them to tools. And so if I turn off the tool layer, they disappear. All right. And then I want to, just like before, I'm going to uh, hit the M key for move. Just all I'm doing is hovering over this. It's not selected. I just hover over it and you can see it automatically selects. Grab that and then rotate. And I want to rotate it 90 degrees. You can see down here, if I had not clicked and it was 89, I could just type in 90. All right. And then I'm going to grab the uh, selected, grab the move tool and grab that corner. And I'm going to put it right next to that. Actually, I want to put it so it's sitting on the floor. And again, this, these things can be moved around later. This is the time to experiment and explore and, and uh, try out spaces. It's, uh, it's pretty painless to, to change things at this point. So now, just like I masked up these other boxes, I want to mass up a box that um, these will fit into. Uh, take a, uh, the rectangle tool. And because these are grouped, it's not going to stick to this. I can grab this corner and come up. And you can see that it's kind of, uh, there's a rectangle now that is over this. I can just come over here, select this edge of it, and hit the M key for move. And I can just draw this out until it touches there. At this point, this will be the interior of the box that I'm massing up. So I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and double click, right click, make a group. Then I'm going to double click, open that group, click one more time, P key, push pull. I'm going to come all the way to the back of this one. And that gives me what would be the interior dimensions. Well, it's going to be out of three quarter material, so I need to account for that. I won't have three quarter on the front. It'll be everything will be flush, but I'm going to draw the back out three quarters, pull out 0.75, enter. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead on this side. I'm going to pull out 1.5, but actually I uh, want to have a little more space in there. They, I don't want them tight. So I'm going to go two inches and then height wise, I need to come up an inch and a half to account for the material. But again, I want to be a little bit taller than that. So I'm going to um, hit the space bar, grab, uh, click on that surface. I'm still in the group, so I'm just clicking on whatever surface I want to edit. And I'm going to pull that up two inches. I'm going to make that one group and I want to move this up three quarters because they'll be sitting on three quarter plywood 0.75 inner and I'm going to move it over to one side 0.75 inner all right and so you can see I have it's it'll be sitting on the plywood here resting on the plywood here there's a little extra room on this side and they're not quite touching the top so that accounts for um, a sawhorse box so now that I've masked that up I'm going to click on this uh, mass and I'm going to see it's on layer zero and I'm going to change the layer to massing. All right. So we've kind of got everything organized and I'll have more of this massing to do and we'll come back to it after I get some of that done. But just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at, if I grab this garage, which is what uh, these uh, benches will fit in and I bring it into the trailer, and I want to stick it into that corner, uh, but I can't see that corner. I could rotate it around, but a quick and easy way is up here at the top. See, there's an X-ray tool that just lets you see through surfaces. Now, if I grab this 
corner and I can just pull it right into that corner and snap it there. So that's a good way to, when you're having difficulty um, adjusting things, putting it in the x-ray mode is real helpful. All right, so now with that box big enough to hold all of these, and let's move this one out of the way. In fact, I'm just going to delete that one. And I'm going to grab this one, which is the sawhorse box. And I'm going to move this over here. Oh, I grabbed the sawhorses. I'll just set those out of the way. And I'm going to grab the box that I masked up. And these boxes would end up being cabinets. So I'm going to grab this corner, set it right up here. Same thing, I'll put on the x-ray. And I'm going to grab that corner, come back in, and drop it right there. Turn off the x-ray. Now, the openings will be here on these. And um, obviously, this side of the trailer, I've got it pulled up tight. That will um, interfere with access. But because I'm putting uh, these sawhorses in there, and they're not all connected in the real world, if I want to get at, I'll probably actually put this set on this side. In fact, I'll do that. Well, I'll do that later, but um, that way I can pull those out. But I have eight of these and I could pull out the second or third one from the end. And then I could pull the last one that's tucked into the corner out. So you can see what I'm doing here. Now, what I can do is I can go, okay, this looks good. I have the ramp door down. I'll be able to slide my benches out. I'll have this space here. Possibly I could work my levels out in there. Um, I'll have my sawhorses here, so all of my work surfaces and supports can be pulled right out. And the levels, will grab those. I probably would also fit in my uh, tracks in there, so I could pull my tracks out. But what I see, the problem I'm seeing here is with this width, if I come over here and hit the T key for tape measure, and I come over and say I want to have 20 inch boxes on that side, then my, my walkway, if I grab the dimension tool here and I just click there and click there, all of a sudden I'm down to a one foot six and three quarter walkway, which isn't gonna work. I want to target 30 inches. If I have to go down a bit, I will, but at this point I'm not willing to give that up. So I've got a couple of options. I can um, delete the extra uh, total station, which I don't own one right now, and I could just worry about fitting that in later. That would give me another 10 inches. Uh, the other thing I could do is uh, stack these a different way, find maybe a location uh, on this side to put one, um, possibly go taller. I've got uh, this space here, which I was thinking would be a good work surface, a good workbench to spread tools on, or just, just a little area to do a few things. Um, but um, <clears throat> that's not as essential as the walkway. So it might be that I'll end up taking these up higher, um, nesting in these, and sort of making this a taller um, but narrower um, box. But that's the kind of thing that I'm, I'm going to be doing here. I'll, I'll, I'll keep playing with this, and in the next video when I have uh, more of it worked out, then I'll show you what I've uh, done and sort of deconstruct it. So this, uh, hopefully what this video will do is let you get the idea of whatever your space is, whether it's a, a mobile space like this or a fixed space like your garage. Uh, even if you've got a big space, you, you know, don't want to waste it. So uh, particularly with your tools, it's good to, to have them stored properly so you know right where they are, even if it's in a bigger shop. By, ma by doing these mass ups, uh, you can see how quick and easy you can make any shape you want and having your uh, models of your tools and even if they're not actual representations like these levels are nothing more than these masked up boxes painted yellow and drawn out to the right height, length and width so that when I fit them in I know how they'll fit. And then like these tracks here, I download, downloaded these right off of the um, uh, website here at Google so if I type in a Festool, and you can see all the Festool models that are in there, and you just grab the track, and um, so grab this, download, okay, and that brings that right into the model. All right, so I'm going to call that uh, a good place to stop on this. This should give you a good idea of the direction I'm going, 
and uh, we'll pick it up in the next one. And just as a reminder, as I mentioned in the last video, um, if these are helpful, if you find uh, even a tip or two that works for you, give it a thumbs up and even better, share it. I get a lot of people who mention a video or see a video, make a comment, and don't realize I have other videos. If you go to the Paul Holmes um, YouTube channel, you just go to YouTube and type in uh, Paul Holmes, this is the view you'll see. I've got this set to the um, how others see it. This isn't how I see it because it's my channel, but put it in this mode, you see it. And what I do is I create these playlists. So not only can you look at all of my videos, which are, I think, over 70 videos at this time, but when I create these playlists, like here, I've created this playlist, which is the um, Rolling Toolbox, all of the videos will be in that playlist. If you take a look at building the Polk Total Station, there's 50, it's a 15 part series. And so you can click on it and go through that whole series. And this is not true of just my YouTube channel, but uh, anybody's YouTube channel. And these are, these are all the uh, other YouTube channels I subscribe to. So I get notifications when they uh, put up uh, new videos and it gives me a chance to keep an eye on some of these guys I really like. So YouTube is a great resource. If you learn how to use it, it's got a lot of ways to help you. So hopefully you found this video helpful and thanks for taking the time to watch.